Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and healthy. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us for a special FizzDAP Tips and Tricks webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that due to the volume of attendees, all lines have been muted. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them through the chat and we'll save some time to address them at the end of the webinar. Today's tips and tricks topic is remote exam proctoring. Our hosts are Christy Morley, the FizzDAP Assessment Development Manager, and Ben Tape, a solutions consultant with FizzDAP. So without further delay, I'll pass it off to you, Christy and Ben. Hi, this is Christy Morley here. I'm the Assessment Development Manager here at FizzDAP. Um, and today we're gonna be talking about remote exam proctoring um, because many, if not all of your programs have been forced to make the switch to a distance learning format um, versus the in-class in live version format that we're used to. Um, so a lot of you have been asking about the best way to go ahead and proctor FizzDAP exams remotely during the next couple of months. Um, so we, over the past few weeks, we've been researching several online proctoring tools that are available for purchase. However, a lot of these online programs uh, mainly focus on preventing students from cheating, which of course we want to prevent. Um, but here at FizzDAP, we want to prevent both cheating and main, maintain exam security at the same time. Um, in addition to these online proctoring software programs being cost prohibitive, we've found that they also can't provide the same services that a real live proctor can. So the way that we've found to best mimic the in-class proctoring process is to proctor the exams remotely via Zoom or some other type of video conferencing system. Um, so today we're gonna go over the procedures for Zoom proctoring, and then we'll have some time at, to answer questions at the end. So first of all, I just wanted to mention that we're recommending Zoom since this is what we use internally here at FizzDAP and that's what we're comfortable with and what we know. But there are lots of other online video conferencing systems that would also work. Um, just as long as they have the same features and functionality that we're gonna outline today. So at the end of the webinar, we'll send you some supporting documents that go over these protocols, so don't worry too much about taking extensive notes. Um, we've created one document that is student-facing that you can go ahead and distribute to your students, and then another document that's meant for internal use for proctors only. Um, so basically, we want this process to be as similar as possible to an in-classroom in live proctored setting. Um, and in order to achieve that, your students will need to share both their screens and a live video feed of themselves while taking the exam. Um, we're actually requesting dual video feed if students have more than one device available. Okay, so let's walk through the process. Uh, so first of all, we want you and your students to make sure that you're familiar with Zoom. Um, I know a lot of you have, are, have used this uh, video conferencing system before, so you probably know all about it. But for those of you who are new to it, you can go to zoom.us and schedule a free demo where they'll walk you through the features and functionality and how everything works. Um, then after that, you'll be setting up in individual times to proctor the exams with your students. Um, the preferred proctor ratio that we would like you to do is one to one. So just have one proctor per student. Um, the maximum that we're recommending is one proctor per three students. If you do, if you have limited resources or large class sizes, you can go ahead and do that. Um, if you're proctoring multiple students at a time, you'll have to use make use of the breakout rooms feature on Zoom. Um, so what this feature does, it kind of splits everyone into their own areas so that they can't see each other's screens and they can't see each other's uh, video feed. So you need to do that if you're proctoring more than one student at a time. So logging into Zoom before the exam, um, you'll make sure that students are logging into the meeting via the two different devices. Um, so they'll be using their primary device, um, which is most likely their laptop as uh, the frontal view. Of, so they'll have their normal webcam on and you'll, you can see the front of their face. Um, we're also asking that if they have an additional device available, such as an iPad or an, a smartphone, that they set that up on the side to show a profile view of, of their activity during the exam. Um, and then the next most important thing is that students are using a full desktop view. Um, so I'll go into Zoom and show you how that looks. So when you're in the Zoom, you have the option to do the screen share and there's a, um, several different options for what you can be sharing. Uh, we need you to make sure that the, your students are showing the full desktop. So that's this first view here, um, desktop one up in, up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, there's a couple other options where they can share just one single document or one single browser, um, but that would prevent you from viewing activity if they happen to open up another browser. Um, so we need you to make sure that they're using the full desktop view there. 
And then in addition to the screen sharing feature, you'll have to have them um, use this remote control feature. So once they click into screen sharing and they allow you to view their entire desktop, there's an icon that'll pop up on the Zoom meeting that's called the remote control. Um, so you need them to allow you to access um, that. And so this will allow you to control their screen when necessary. And this comes into play when you have to enter the exam password, just because we don't want you um, distributing that information out to students because um, in the event that you have two students taking it the same day, they could share that information with another student and they could get early access to the exam. Um, so to avoid that, we just um, will have you enter the password yourselves using this remote control feature on Zoom. So once you have them logged into Zoom and everything's set with the webcam, the screen share, and the remote control, um, we'll have you ask your students to show them a, show you a complete 360 degree view of their testing environment just so you can make sure that they don't have any resources or any other people in the room with them. Um, so once that, that's all set you can begin the exam and we want you to proceed as you usually would with the exam instructions, give them the whole speech about academic integrity and not cheating, um, just proceed as you normally would and then once again you'll have to briefly take control of the student screen to insert that password um, and then they can go ahead and start the exam. And then during the exam, you'll be monitoring both their screen activity and the dual video feed. And if you're monitoring three students at once, that'll be um, quite a bit of activity to keep your eyes on. So we're asking that you please not multitask during this process. Um, sometimes when you're on a Zoom meeting or go-to meeting, it can be tempting to check your email or do something quickly. Um, but we really need you to have this screen up the whole time so that you can be monitoring their activity. Um, in the event of any troubleshooting that needs to happen, um, with, since this is an online exam, we're, we're hoping students wouldn't do this, but there's a possibility that someone might be tempted to claim that their internet has been disconnected and um, take that time to look something up. Um, so if that does happen and if they get disconnected from the internet for some reason, uh, we want you to request that they take a screenshot right away to show as kind of evidence and proof that that actually happened, that they're not just making it up. Um, and then if there is pr any prolonged kind of internet disconnectivity from either the Zoom feed um, or the exam, we want you to ha no notify us immediately. Um, so if they're disconnected from the Zoom meeting and you think they might be having unproctored um, access to the exam, we'll want you to send an email to me, so that's cmorley at fizdap.net, um, so that I can go in and manually end their at exam attempt. Um, another thing to note is that we are, um, since this is an exceptional and temporary circumstance, we're asking that you use earlier versions of the comprehensive exams if possible. Um, so that would be the PRE 3 and PRE 4, just because the PRE 5 is newly validated, and we want to help um, protect that newly validated content. Um, another thing to note about the Zoom um, video conferencing system that you might have heard about recently is that they've had some security issues. Um, a couple weeks ago of having people log into online classrooms and now that everyone's using this um, distance-based learning format. Um, so they actually released a security update. Um, they have a, a patch that was released last week. So make sure that your Zoom is up to date and that you have all the updates installed before you begin this process. Um, Kurt or Ben, is there anything that you wanted to add about this remote proctoring process? Uh, no, I think you've covered uh, everything that's come up with the questions I've gotten so far. Yeah, I, I just want to say, um, you know, thanks for everybody for taking the steps to do this. One thing that we want to make sure with our FISDAP exams, and I think most of you know this because that's why you utilize them, but it's very important for us, not just the security of the exam by locking down a browser so people can't cut and paste or other things, but we really want to tech, protect the integrity of this exam because everybody relies on these high stakes exam security features. We're getting security already through the proctoring, but now we're taking that extra step and by all us doing this, we're protecting the integrity of this exam that we all rely on. So that's really the importance of this and why you know the proctoring and having the eyes on and not just locking down browsers is so important to us. So thank you for the extra efforts that this is taking. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, Christy, we did just get a question. Um, just open it up here. Uh, so this question is from Christine. Um, the question is, is GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar acceptable also with the one-to-one -one ratio or one-to-three? 
if we can see their exam screen with the second device? Is this only for the comprehensive exam? Um, yes, good question. So yes, uh, GoToMeeting is acceptable as long as you can um, follow the same protocols that we've outlined in the documentation that you've received. Um, and then this is not just for the comprehensive exams. That was just an example of when there's a case when you can use an older, um, less, um, a, an older version of an exam. So like something that's been more exposed than the PRE5, in that case, we would want you to do that. Uh, but for the unit exams, you can go ahead and use those as you normally would. Thanks, Christy. We have another question. With the test, how do you know which is the older version? Um, so you would want to schedule the PRE3 or PRE4 instead of the PRE5 for the unit exams. This doesn't apply. And is that available to all instructors in the FISDAP platform? Could you maybe show them where to find that? Um, ben, do you know how that shows up when, when they're scheduling an exam? Yep. Um, so in the normal test schedule, uh, there is an option uh, just to select which test you're going to do. And under the paramedic comprehensive exam section, there is the paramedic readiness three, four, and five to select from. So we just ask that you're selecting the three or the four for this one. But all three are available. And the students will have two attempts at each uh, exam if they have the paramedic comprehensive exam product. Thank you, Ben. And one final question, do you know if GoToMeeting has the option to put the password in? Um, I'm actually not sure for GoToMeeting, but if you go to the settings page, um, like in Zoom, it's on the uh, meeting settings page, you can see if they have some kind of remote control or control the other person's screen option. All right, awesome. Well, thank you, Christy, Ben, and Kurt, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. We hope to have you join us for the next Tips and Tricks webinars on April 29th and May 13th. To stay up to date on upcoming webinars or to see recordings of previous webinars, including this one, uh, you can visit go.fizdap.net slash tips and tricks. So this one will be uploaded uh, later on in the day if you want to go back and reference it again. Uh, we can also email out the documents that we provided here if you didn't have a chance to save them. There will also be a quick webinar, or a, sorry, a quick survey after the webinar. So please be sure to let us know your thoughts on today's and if you have any suggestions for future topics. In addition, if you have any questions that weren't addressed today, please feel free to submit them there and we will reach out to you shortly. Thank you all so much for attending and we'll see you next time.